Hello everyone, my name is PixelRiffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at some archaeology as we go and explore the Desert Temple. So we need to prepare ourselves for that by grabbing the required ingredients for a brush. We'll need one copper ingot, and we'll need a feather, which I should have here in my mob drops. All you gotta do is kill a chicken for one of those, and that should craft together with a stick to make a brush. And while that and a pickaxe is probably everything we need, to get the most out of finding a desert temple, I am going to take some obsidian with me so that we can create a nether portal over at the desert, allowing us to return to our home base nice and easily via the fast travel capabilities of the nether. So without further ado, we're going to take our raft back out on the water and I'm going to return to the desert that we found in a previous episode. But along the way, since we've covered going to the nether for the first time, we might want to take a quick look at this. This is a ruined nether portal which can occur through throughout the overworld, they can even actually be found in the nether. And the idea is that these are structures that teach you how to create a nether portal if you don't know already. Usually they will have some lava or obsidian nearby that you can convert into obsidian that will replace the blocks of the portal. And since crying obsidian cannot be used to form a nether portal, it won't be part of the traditional portal frame, we can remove that and replace it with these obsidian blocks that we find nearby. Many of these portals are set up with just the right amount of obsidian nearby in order to recreate the portal frame itself, or at least craft a smaller portal frame if you end up with a larger portal made of several blocks. We can remove the lava sources here, and there might be some more hiding under the netherrack and stone bricks. And often this chest will have a block or two of obsidian in it, as well, so we can grab that one and place it here and there, our portal is almost complete. <laughs> this lava source around here should provide the final block, and we can always light this portal if we want to and see where it takes us in the nether. The loot chest will often have golden tools and armor in it, as a reminder that gold is one of the chief resources of the nether, and golden armor is often necessary to keep yourself safe from piglins. The chests will even have things that you can use to light the portal, like a free flint and steel, or even some fire charges which can be used to set a fire once. I am kind of interested actually to hop through this portal and see exactly where it spits us out in the nether. And that looks like a soul sand valley, very close to a convenient structure of bone blocks, but we are a good deal south from our main nether portal, so if we wanted to head back to the portal that we've already established, we probably want to head north from here. For now though, we are going to simply leave this portal lit, and conveniently that might take us back to that savannah village if we want to revisit it in future. We can come here through the nether from our home and get there slightly quicker. But what I'm looking for, of course, is the canal that we dug through this area on the way to that desert. Okay, here we are arriving at the Badlands, and what we need to be aiming for is the whiter sand over here. The red sand around here is really cool looking, but this is not the environment that will contain our main focus for today's episode the Desert Temple, which does mean that we will be continuing to ignore the Desert Village over here on the horizon, but trust me, we will get back to that. Our focus is down here in the valley, where as you can see, there are two mysterious columns with orange terracotta peeking out from the sand. These are desert pyramids, which we often just end up calling desert temples. This pyramid-like structure on the surface and these two columns are the main thing you need to look out for, and as we step in here, you'll find that there are a few mobs already spawned, since oftentimes this structure will be buried in sand, and so the inside will be dark enough for hostile mobs to naturally spawn. Having dispatched those skeletons, we're going to resolve that for ourselves by placing down a couple of torches. We might put one in each of the wings as well, even though some natural sunlight is filtering in. We'll pop a torch in there, and hopefully that should prevent any more hostile mobs from spawning, as we explore the structure. Now the main event of these desert temples has always been under this floor mosaic, but right now I'm a little hesitant to dig out the block in the center until the arrow despawns. There we go, now it's slightly safer, because if we break this single piece of terracotta in the middle, you'll see that down there is a stone pressure plate, and an item falling onto that will not have any impact, but I can never remember whether or not arrows have any impact. Either way, there are some chests down there that it is important for us to take a look at, so we're going to pick one of the sandstone blocks adjacent to this column here, and we're going to dig straight down, because that is going to take us down into this burial chamber, or at least that's how I like to think of it, and we can disable that stone pressure plate, because if we dig up the floor, you'll find that this place is loaded to explode. There are nine TNT blocks underneath that central platform which will be set off by you stepping on that pressure plate, or anything stepping on that pressure plate. 
plate. So if you are unlucky enough to have some mobs spawn down here in this 9x9 floor area, chances are one of them might step on that pressure plate before you even have a chance to raid the structure. Either way, the walls here are made out of sandstone, cut sandstone, and this chiseled sandstone block, so we've picked up a little bit of that, but our prize is here in these four chests. If we open this up, you'll see there's a variety of things in here, often a fair amount of junk, but that does include a saddle and some iron horse armor, just in case we want to grab those. We got some bones and rotten flesh, kind of standard you might expect for a desert temple like this, and some gunpowder that's clearly left over from laying that TNT trap. The chest to the right of that has some more riches in this case. We've got a couple of gold ingots there. Seven gold ingots is actually probably worth taking. It might be worth snagging the gunpowder if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And bones, we've got a lot of from our skeleton farm, so I'm not too worried about bringing those for now. The third chest has some incredible loot. Not only does it have a golden apple, which are very precious, but can be crafted if you can spare eight gold ingots and a regular apple, but it also has a golden apple with that enchantment glow to it. And we have found an enchanted golden apple, one of the most sought after pieces of loot in Minecraft. These are very precious food items. They can also be crafted into a banner pattern, the game has just reminded me. In addition to restoring some of your saturation, allowing you to recover health that way, it will give you a regeneration effect, some extra hearts of health, some natural resistance to damage, and some fire resistance, just in case you're about to step in lava. So that is an absolutely incredible find, very happy to have encountered one of those this early in the series. And finally, here in this chest, we have the other thing I was hoping to encounter some more armor trims. We have two smithing templates here for the dune armor trim, which will provide a different pattern to the coast armor trim I've already used here on my armor. We got an enchanted book in here as well of Fortune 1. Well, I could have used that a few episodes ago. We're going to take that with us anyway, and there's even some iron, a bit more horse armor, and some more bones in here for us. So you know what? I'm going to take all of the bones with me since it's always nice to have those around. I'm going to grab all of the gunpowder as well. We might leave that central blue terracotta here and grab some of the horse armor to take home with us. And then, just so that we can preserve this structure a little bit, we are going to pillar out using the sandstone blocks that we mined out on our way down here. Now emerging from the desert temple, the sun is still relatively high, so we don't need to worry too much about sleeping just yet, but to help the inhabitants of the nearby desert village stave off zombie attacks, I'll try and sleep once the sun reaches the horizon. But there are some other things to do here at this desert temple, which is why we've brought the brush along. So I'm going to temporarily pop down my chest raft. You can actually place boats on something that isn't water, although driving them around on land is a very very, very slow process. We're just going to use this for the inventory. We're going to drop off everything that we've got from the desert temple and even that nether portal that we found so far. We're going to leave all of the loot in here and that way we can clear out our inventory so that we can take note of our archaeological finds. Because yes, this desert temple is one of the first places we can practice Minecraft's new art of archaeology. So the following day, hopping back down into this chamber, you'll notice that while most of the floor in this room is sandstone, there is a patch of sand over here in this corner, and some of the sand blocks do not quite look like the others. We're going to remove these three pillars here very carefully so we can take a better look at the floor that we're standing on, and you'll notice that this block here looks slightly different, slightly craggier, a little bit closer to the texture of sandstone. That is suspicious sand, and that is the first target for our new brush. We're going to grab the brush in our hand, we're going to hold down the right click button, we'll start to brush the surface, and an item will appear in the suspicious sand, popping out on top and converting it back into a regular sand block. And we have claimed an emerald as our first archaeological find. We might dig out a couple of the other blocks around here just to make sure that there aren't any suspicious sand blocks hiding below the surface. Some of the sand does extend past the boundaries of the structure and underneath the walls here, but it looks like it ends about there. So we might put some of those blocks back in the meantime, and we can start to skim off this top layer of sand here. There are a couple of things you should know about suspicious sand, and the reason we are being a little more careful with this block than we are with some of the others. Suspicious sand cannot be obtained by using a shovel on it. Even if you have silk touch on your shovel, the block will simply break. It's one of those things like budding amethyst or spawners, which are not meant to be obtained in survival Minecraft. In addition to that, like the sand blocks around it, it is affected by gravity, and 
and if it falls, the precious item inside it is going to break. The block will revert back into a block of sand and will be unable to claim any items from it. So before brushing any suspicious sand, we should be confident that the blocks below it are supporting it and it's not going to fall and break because the results we get from it can be quite the reward. So I've identified that this area right here looks like the area we need to dig down for suspicious sand because there is sand below this sort of square patch of the desert temple, but around the outside, it looks like there are sandstone walls. My shovel has efficiency four and unbreaking three, so I'm going to just tap it every so often, being a little bit careful here because I don't want to accidentally break a block of the suspicious sand by digging down too excitedly. And it looks like there weren't any suspicious sand blocks on the next layer, so we'll start on the layer below that, and slowly we are starting to uncover a separate room of the desert temple. Now you will start to see the pattern of those chiseled sandstone blocks appearing in the walls, and we have four blocks of suspicious sand now revealing themselves. We've got one here, two in the floor there, and one on its own over here. So first let's brush this block in the wall to see what pops out. That looks like a piece of gunpowder to me. Yep, there we go. Let's brush the one in the floor here, and we get a full block of TNT. So once again, this area might have been trapped once upon a time. Let's see if we get anything different from this one. We got an emerald from that. That's lovely. And finally, this block over here. What's that going to get us? That looks like another piece of gunpowder. That is all the suspicious sand for this layer, so we can take out each of these blocks and start to dig out the next layer of the floor. And we uncover another floor mosaic, similar to the one that's in the center of our desert pyramid here. Now, this one isn't going to have a burial chamber underneath it, so unfortunately, no more loot chests for us, but we've at least acquired a couple of emeralds, a diamond, some gunpowder, and some TNT from digging out this room. I'm gonna use a couple of the sand blocks here to pillar up on the side so we can continue excavating what looks like a staircase down into this area, but it looks like some of the sand here might have compacted right there with the sandstone, and so we could remove that to see if that presents, yeah, it does, a little doorway into this area. And so by digging out this area of the desert temple, we have a few archeological finds and a whole new section of the desert temple, which did not exist before Minecraft 1.20 came along and modified the structure to include blocks you could brush for archeology. span And those should be the only suspicious sand blocks that we find around the outside of this desert temple, but I think it might still be worth uncovering the rest of the structure here just so we can see exactly what this whole thing looks like. Since desert pyramids will often generate buried in the ground like this, you can do a little bit of digging to see exactly where the structure begins and ends. And I think the floor level for the outside is about here. So if we dig out the rest of the entrance, there we go, a two block wide trench has revealed the entrance. You can kind of judge that by where the bottom of these towers is with the orange terracotta and a single block of sandstone at the base. That lets us in the front door so we can come and go as we please. And if we wanted to return to this desert pyramid at any point, it might be worth setting up another nether portal right here with the obsidian that I brought along with us. But the other good news is that this isn't the only desert temple we are likely to find. It is possible for multiple desert temples to generate in a single desert biome, especially when you see one as large as this one. There will also be other deserts throughout the world that will generate their own desert pyramids, so you are likely to find these structures as you explore the world, and in each one there should be the opportunity to dig out that extra side chamber, brush out those suspicious sand blocks, and get hold of some loot from the burial chamber. But in my case, I'm going to explore this desert a little more, because I believe on the horizon over here, I spotted another structure in the desert where we can practice archaeology. Yep, just over here we have a tiny structure, but an important one. This is a desert well. You'll typically find these generating on their own in deserts with a little cross shape of water inside of here. But if you take a closer look, that block right there underneath this water source here is suspicious sand. If I carefully remove all of the water sources from each side of this here and remove that last one in the center, we can dry out the desert well for now and we can take a closer look at that suspicious sand block. Let's take out the brush and let's carefully brush that to see what we end up getting. What is that? Is that... I think, <laughs> I think that was just a stick. Let's see if we get any more. There we go, digging down below this desert well. We have a central block of suspicious sand here. Let's dig that up, and this 
Might be what I was hoping for. That is not a stick, my friends. That is our first pottery shirt. That's right, I said pottery shirt, not shard. <laughs> from the world of archaeology, from what I have gathered, shard is a term that's used to refer to glass objects, whereas shirt is used for ceramic objects, and this is a piece of pottery. It's been made out of clay. There is also a chance that you will find some of these pottery shards inside of a desert temple, so it's a good thing to look out for while you're brushing that suspicious sand. So along with the treasure we found in the center of the desert temple, temple here, these five items are our archaeological finds. I guess one stick should apply to that as well, but we got the pottery shirt from the desert well, we got the stick from the desert well, and everything else we got from the desert temple. So after all of those findings, I think it's time to head home, but since this is my nearest desert and it is a reasonable distance to travel, it took more than one Minecraft day for me to get here, I think I'm going to set up a nether portal right here so I can return a little quicker through the nether. And dropping off some of that more valuable stuff, just in case our nether spawn is a little rough, we're going to light up this portal and see where it takes us in the nether. Oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, this is going to be an interesting prospect. <laughs> I'm immediately getting shot at with blazes. This is a bad idea. We're in the center of a nether fortress. Hmm, yeah, ugh. <laughs> so I didn't exactly get a great chance to get my bearings in there. I'm not sure exactly which direction we need to go, but if I take some of the sandstone from in here, we can at least form a protective barrier around our portal and give ourselves a moment to think. Because yep, those fireball chucking mobs up there, while they are not as explosive as ghasts, are a little destructive. They are blazes, and we really don't want to be shot by them too much. So now I'm here in this little cubby behind my nether portal, we can take a quick look. And it seems like in order to head back to our home coordinates, we need to head north and a little bit east, which makes sense. Those are the directions we need to travel in the overworld. My main concern is that right here we're surrounded by this little moat of lava and also some dangerous creatures that are going to fireball us. But maybe if I'm careful, I can build out a little bridge of sandstone right here and not get shot off into the lava by anything. We'll make a safety rail over here as well. And at least decorating my portal with this much sandstone will make it very clear that this is the way we return to the desert. The one thing I do need to bear in mind though is that sandstone is a material that can be exploded by ghasts, unlike cobblestone, and ghasts are more likely to spawn around here in this soul sand valley biome, so I should be a little careful about that. Still, we can take down some of these bone blocks that are in the way, and now we have a path through to our nether portal. We'll make a little canopy over the top of this just to make sure that it's protected. And now from here, we should at least be able to run out across this soul sand valley, dig into the netherrack wall here so we're not bridging around using too much material, and from there, we should be able to carve a path back to my nether portal. This might occasionally mean building a few bridges of our own and then ducking away from any blazes that shoot at us, especially since netherrack, the block that we're building with here, can burn forever, so the fire isn't going to be put out unless we put it out manually. We also need to be very careful about the noises I'm hearing above me because some wither skeletons are prowling the edges of the nether fortress and some regular skeletons are hanging out here just waiting to shoot me off into lava. Okay, it's been a little treacherous. I'm having to bridge out over a pretty large lava lake, so I think the best, safest thing for us to do is going to be to start a staircase upwards. And we should also be cautious of a couple of things. First of all, any soul sand blocks on the floor here are likely to slow us down, so we need to ideally replace these with a block that allows us to run a little faster. And also, the landscape of the nether has occasional lava source blocks hidden in the walls. Any kind of large area of terrain like this is going to generate a few blocks of lava underneath the surface, so it's a good idea to make sure you have some blocks on your hotbar that you can switch to very easily to plug up any lava sources you uncover whilst you're digging out a wall with this kind of speed. Now by my calculations we need to be headed about another 100 blocks this way and then about another 200 blocks east, so this is going to be quite the trek, and when I saw that nether fortress I was almost ready to give up and go back via the overworld, but I think a nether portal connection to that desert is going to be really valuable to us, and hey, at least we have an easy walk over to a nether fortress if we make a tunnel that way. On the other hand, anything that involves bridging out over a lava lake is perhaps best avoided until we have some safer ways to do that, like potions of fire resistance. I don't want to eat that enchanted golden apple right now. On the other hand, sometimes we're just not going to have a choice, so I'm checking around for skeletons and we'll try and make this quick. And while we could try and pick a path over the terrain of the nether and try and memorize a route through some of these more treacherous biomes, I think digging a tunnel is probably going to be the safest and best strategy for us long term. Until we come out to areas like this, 
<laughs> where there's a massive lava lake right there. And we still need to be at roughly this height if we want to meet up with the portal that was created in the basalt delta where we first spawned in. I think it's probably time to try going north again. <laughs> and this is definitely a time where I will advocate for using coordinates over any other approach. It looks like we have found the basalt deltas at least. That is a good sign. But that means the going will be a lot slower since we end up mining blackstone and basalt a lot slower than we mine netherrack. And it also means the terrain here is going to get a little more treacherous since there are small lava pools everywhere. At least it's not one of those massive lava lakes though. <laughs> we should also be aware of magma cubes dropping on us and that is a very precarious place for that to happen. Which is also why I will advocate for building a roof over our nether tunnel <laughs> and preferably some handrails <laughs> so that we don't end up with stuff jumping in the sides too. These basalt deltas are also more likely than any other region of the nether to have lava sources in the walls that you dig into. So once again, make sure you're being careful and back off if you see any signs of lava. Well right here at this little pocket of magma is actually roughly where we want to be turning east again. So let me take those out of the floor. Let's put a torch here, dig out a couple more blocks in this direction and let's hope that we get a straight path through to our other nether portal. Well, I wouldn't exactly call this path straightforward, but at least the terrain is a bit more open and we can see where on earth we're going. Some of these lava sources are also flowing down from the ceiling, which we can do less about, but we can at least try and block these off. And there at last is our little cobblestone box. We are almost back. I've just got to place a few more basalt blocks in here. Make sure we don't step down into lava. And we are home. <laughs> That was an ordeal, but I tell you what, from this portal, through the basalt delta and into our little tunnel that we've carved, then all the way down here into the soul sand valley, a quick right turn, a couple of unwanted skirmishes with skeletons, get in the lava, and then a left turn here, up the staircase, and a straight shot into the center of that nether fortress, is about 60 seconds. Yeah, if I'm sprinting the whole way and I'm not disturbed by anything else, it takes me about a minute to get here. So that is a lot faster than it was to travel from our base in the overworld to the desert by boat. It also feels a lot more dangerous right now, but trust me, we can come back with more materials to make this path safe if we need to. In the meantime, we just need to avoid getting body checked by any of these magma cubes. We can step on into our portal. And as always, it's dark and raining when we emerge from the nether, but <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. And that slightly chaotic dash through the nether was really the first steps towards setting up our nether hub, which is something I didn't really expect to be doing in this episode, but I guess here we are, right? I will also briefly add that I have placed some fence gates around the outside of our nether portal here just to prevent any other mobs from wandering in, because other mobs won't avoid going into the nether portal from this side, and we have sheep and cows and whatnot from the meadows around here, and even skeletons and creepers and zombies at night that have the potential whilst they're wandering around randomly to step into this portal and get transported to the nether. Once there, they'll remain frozen on the other side until the player comes through, and in the event of something like a creeper, that could be kind of disastrous, because while you're loading into the nether, the creeper could spot you and explode, and suddenly your portal is deactivated and you're in a basalt delta surrounded by lava pouring in on all sides. So I will advocate for either blocking up one side of your nether portal like this, just to make sure that stuff can't come in through one side, or adding something like fence gates to it, so that you can let yourself in whenever you're ready to go to the nether, but other things cannot enter. And in future, we'll look at some more sophisticated ways of preventing mobs from entering your nether portal. For now, I'm going to quickly drop off some of these nether materials, except perhaps for some that we'll use to make our portal safer. And we're going to return to the desert to pick up that boatload of materials that I left over there in the raft. Okay, back here at the desert temple, we should probably decorate that portal in some way or another. But for now, yeah, it looks like we do have more materials than I can take back with me in one trip. Well, that's fine. For the moment, I'm going to leave all of the sand and sand sandstone blocks here, a bit of the netherrack as well, and let's just make it back with all of the precious stuff. Oh, and once I'm into that tunnel, I feel a lot safer, let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, it is structures week. I did ask for structures, so <laughs> Minecraft is delivering, apparently. Oh, but we made it. We made it back to the overworld on the other side, and we can drop off all of the valuables here in our chests at home. And I still think it's absolutely nuts that we found an enchanted golden apple. Those are genuinely some of the rarest items in the game, so we're going to leave that right here alongside some of the ores that I've been mining with Silk Touch on my live streams. We're going to put the Dune armor trim up here with the Coast armor trim so that we can stash that for later. And there's a few other things that we could stash away. But right now, I'd like to talk more about this pottery shirt that we dug up. And for that, I'll need to go and get some more clay. We don't need to go all the way back to the lush cave biome, though. We can usually find clay near the surface in river biomes. There's a few blocks of it under the surface right here. We'll grab a few clay balls from the blocks there. We'll throw the clay balls into a furnace with some coal here and we'll 
will get those smelting into clay bricks. Because pottery sherds are meant to be combined in groups of four, but it's possible to combine them with bricks as well and make our own decorated pots. We'll put that in there with three bricks in the other three positions, and this gives us a decorated pot which will tell us which of the designs it has on it. The Brewer Pottery Sherd is the main one there, and on the other side it's got blank faces because the rest of those were created using bricks. We can break that with a pickaxe to get the Pottery Sherd and the materials back, but if we rebuild it using the bricks as the decorated pot template, you can make a completely blank one, but we can put our Brewer Pottery Sherd back on there. We can place that down, and then if you break it without using a pickaxe, you can pick it up and take it with you. And with the open neck of these decorated pots, you might be wondering if you can place some flowers in there or something. Something. Well, the answer to that is no, but if you end up crafting a flower pot using some bricks, which is something we did for our fishing house over there, you can place the flower pot in there. It actually aligns really nicely with the neck of the pot, and then you can add something to the top of it, making this quite a neat little house decoration. Since this is the brewer pottery shirt, I might save this and use that as decoration for our potion brewing area once we get around to that. I think that kind of makes a nice decoration for that. But hopefully by then we'll have had a chance to do some more archaeology, acquire some more pottery shirts, and we'll see what other designs we can find, because there are 20 pottery sherds that can be found at different archaeological sites throughout the world. The Desert Temple and Desert Well are just one of those. There are also trail ruins and ocean ruins to be found out there, so hopefully we'll be able to encounter some more of those in the near future. For now, though, I think I've had enough excitement for one day. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at the Desert Temple, and we've now created a nether tunnel connection both to a nether fortress and to the desert, so we can revisit there and take a look at villages in a future episode probably as well. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.